It is lighter. Today we'll take you behind the scenes as my brother-in-law installs one of the thinnest and most advanced home battery units on the market, the Anchor Solex X1. We'll revisit Harris, who now owns an EV, to find out how much money his 12 kilowatt system has saved him since being on this channel back in 2016. We'll be revisiting this when we're a little older, <laughs> but I don't know if we'll be climbing on the roof for five years. Probably not. With advancements in battery tech and efficiency, the next step was logical, integrating a home backup battery to maximize the energy he captures. It is eight years later. We are back up here on the same roof, talking with Harris, taking a look at his solar panels. We are gonna find out if they have paid off, as well as putting a backup battery and having that installed in his house today. So this probably is a little bit of an efficiency killer. We need a good range. And here we are with Harris today, revisiting the solar panels and it is pollen season out here in the south so we need a little bit of rain to clean this off. Down on the ground with only a two-man crew and in a matter of a couple hours these two battery storage units were installed on the wall. So we have the Anchor Solex X1 installed on the outside of the house over here and what I really like about this is the slim design so it's only 5.9 inches so it's really nice because it just kind of blends in with the exterior. My favorite part is probably how modular the design is. Each battery module holds 5 kilowatt hours of energy and the X1 is 40% thinner than traditional home energy storage systems. Plus you have the ability to expand and add additional X1s to best fit your needs without suffering any energy loss. So the batteries inside of each module are made with LFP EV grade batteries. So those help to reduce the risk of overheating. So there's no risk of fires. They also have some built-in safety features inside of them. So there's no risk of shock thanks to the zero volt battery port. And they're rated for extreme conditions, whether it's dust or rain, thanks to their IP65 design. Plus they can withstand extreme temperatures ranging from negative four to 131 degree Fahrenheit. They can output 100% of the power, even at those extremes. Have you had them cleaned? Um, I don't, you know, I think we have cleaned them one time, like professionally cleaned them. I think it ended up being about as much or more than what they make in a month. So not really worth it. <laughs> so, but, yeah, it was better just to But a there. big rainstorm, that's free. Yeah, yeah. And Mother Nature is the best cleaner. Yes, for those of you who did not watch our old video, which we will link down below. But what do we have going on here? So we have a 12 kW system facing south. They're all microinverters, and it is a net power setup with the utility company. Uh, so anything that is made in excess of what we consume, we get credit for at the same rate for what we purchase. Your goal was kind of to, to be like net, like to be even with your power consumption for the house. It, you were one month in. You weren't really sure like if it, you had enough or not. How is that working out for you? Are you able to collect enough energy for your house? Unfortunately, no. Uh, <laughs> it was really cool to see the savings. It was also equally disheartening to see our, um, our consumption. Um, I don't know if I'd call it the good old American way, but we seem to continually consume more than we uh, produce. But there are four people. <laughs> yeah, our, fam our family yeah. has grown. So I think initially I thought we were going to make around 200 to $250 a month and it's probably more in the $150 to $200 range. In the past eight years, he's generated nearly $17,000 worth of electricity on his roof, meaning in about a year his $20,000 solar system will have paid for itself. And then today what we're doing is we're taking that energy and we're basically putting it into batteries. You have that excess storage of energy for your home as like a backup. Now we live in the South too, where we also have some severe weather. So when we got these eight years ago, um, we looked at battery systems and the technology just wasn't really there to feel comfortable putting one inside the house. And the charge capability and the life cycle of the batteries isn't where it is now. So this is pretty neat to be able to Mm -hmm. actually see all that come full circle. So in the event that you actually do have a power outage, the whole unit is able to turn on in less than 20 milliseconds, and it's able to power all of your high watt appliances simultaneously, actually at 1.1 times the rated power output. So you can have everything going, turns on super fast. What Harris loved about the setup was the seamless integration between his existing solar and adding the battery backup system. The system also comes with a 10 year warranty, so you have that peace of mind 
line. And in the event that a pack fails, the unit is smart enough to be able to isolate that specific pack and keep the whole unit still working and available. This thing is brilliant. The built-in thermal boosting technology heats up automatically when it's extremely cold out to keep it charging normally when other batteries stop working. In the summer too, Infinity Power Tech lets it charge and discharge without derating. In this room, it doesn't normally look like this much of a hornet's nest. Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's where the solar comes down. The feed's coming out of it when we swap these automatic transfer switches for the backup controllers. will provide power to them to be able to charge the batteries. Yeah, so these you already had because you had it set up for a generator that yeah. you were thinking about getting, but you decided to do the battery instead. And these basically will take the power that would be coming from the grid, and then if the power ever went out, you could transfer it to the battery instead. Exactly. So, so these, these were for, um, a, like a gas power generator. We probably lose power three, four, five times a year, no more than like half a day. So we never ended up putting the generator in, but it would have been really difficult to do this after the fact. Um, but for switching out for the batteries, it makes it really much simpler. Uh, because all the infrastructure is really here. The Anchor Solix's backup control units were then mounted in the basement, allowing for an all-in-one communication between the solar, the battery systems, and the grid in one spot. And then you can control it from your phone and kind of track the usage and the consumption. And... So like everything right yeah. here, as opposed to having like going on the computer, looking at the solar panels, yep. all this, like it's all in one now. The app has features like storm guard mode, where the system automatically charges to full capacity when severe weather alerts are issued so you're ready for outages. There's also modes for smart energy management, from self-powered mode, which maximizes green energy use, to time of use mode, which helps charge batteries when electricity prices are low. And in places like California, there's NEM3 mode, which allows you to sell electricity as fast as possible while the prices are high. Before integrating batteries he had no way of storing surplus energy and of course couldn't utilize power during outages or at night but now his system continues to output solar power at night during outages and also stores any excess energy during extended sunny periods so what I love most about this is that you have the solar you have the battery storage and your EV so it creates all this energy independence and if you guys have questions about the anchor Solex X1 leave them in the comments below I hope you guys enjoyed this video and learned something new and we'll catch you next Time. To get your Anchor Solex X1, get a free quote at the link below before June 30th and also get the Anchor Solex C800 Plus for free once your X1 is installed. This offer is limited to the first 250 installs. Coming up here has made me realize just how dirty this part of the house is. It's totally out of sight, out of mind. Yeah. I mean, it is what it is, right? I think everybody has that and that's what's relatable. Is that... Were we really up here eight years ago? Yeah, it was eight. It was 2016. I just watched the video this morning. I was like, let me watch that back. Pretty funny. I wonder if I look the same or younger. I feel like you've lost weight. Comment section will decide. Yeah. <laughs> yeah.